Let's go play in the mud. This is Lubeck, one of the best shorebird watching spots in the entire state. The tides can run up to 21 feet. When that tide drops, mud as far as the eye can see. Maine is kind of special because we have these tides and we have these mud flats and the shorebirds stop here in order to feed and refuel for their long trek south. The problem is there's about 34 shorebird species in the state. How can you possibly learn to identify them all? Well, let's make this easy. There may be 34 shorebird species, but they're not all at the shore. Some are on sand beaches, some are on blueberry barrens, some are on rocks. So at the end of the day, there's maybe, I don't know, 15, 16 shorebird species that could be at the shore. Only a small handful of those are tough. Some of them are pretty darn easy. So let's just deal with those tough ones. Let's start with the peeps, those five small sandpipers that can be a little bit difficult to sort out. Let's start with the smallest one, the least sandpiper, the least big sandpiper in the entire world. It's smaller than the rest, it's browner than the rest, and it has yellowish legs. Don't let that yellow leg thing fool you because the guidebooks make a big deal out of it, but sometimes if the legs are muddy, they're in shadow, they're backlit, they can look dark and you can be fooled. So go with that brown bird thing. Because the next one up is the semi-palmated sandpiper, and that's a grayer brown, and it has dark legs. It's maybe a quarter inch bigger than the least sandpiper, so they're very, very similar in size, and they can be standing right next to each other. So brown, slightly grayer, darker legs. 90% of the sandpipers on the beach are going to be just those two species. Now, there's a third small peep, and this is the tough one, a western sandpiper. They actually are western. They bypass Maine and go to Florida where they spend their winter. So where we have semi-palmated sandpipers all over our beaches here in Florida, you would see the same phenomenon, but all of them are western sandpipers. A few get into Maine every year, and here's what you're looking for. It's about the same size as a semi-palmated sandpiper, maybe just a touch bigger. It has a thin, droopy at the point bill. It's gonna be hard to tell apart, but it's got a little rust in the back shoulders, a little rustiness. Look for that. If you've got a sandpiper you're a little suspicious about, look for that field mark. Now there are two of these peeps that are longer winged, and you can notice that. Uh, and they're a little bit bigger. So you've got the white rump sandpiper. Some of the birds out here are white rumped, but they're hard to pick out. Here's what you look for. They are bigger, and they are longer winged, so the first step is to just scan the flock. You're going to see hundreds of semi-palmated sandpipers. Scan the flock until you see one a little bigger. And be suspicious about that one. Take a closer look. Now it's got longer wings, so the wings are longer than the tail. They will stick out past the end. And here, I want you to see this. White rump sandpipers are longer legged, but the bill is about the same size. So they have to stoop over more to pick up their food, right? And that longer wing and the tail just sticks higher into the air. It even sort of wiggles a little bit as they're walking around. You don't see that in the semi-palmated sandpipers so much. Okay, now in slow motion. So if you've got one you're suspicious of, look for that. The other thing that's pretty apparent in white rump sandpipers is they have these chevrons underneath the wings, uh, which is kind of distinctive. Oh, one last thing about white rump sandpipers. Because they are longer legged, they can be a little deeper in the water. So I will look for them in the puddles a little deeper. I will look for them in the water's edge a little deeper than the rest. As I'm scanning the flock for the slightly bigger birds, I will key in on those that are there. Now then, Baird sandpiper. That's a tough little peep. It is like a white rump sandpiper, longer winged, so the wings will stick out past the tail, sometimes even crossing a little bit. It's that long. And they're also about the same size, so when I'm scanning the flock, looking for those bigger birds, I might pick up one of those. They're a little browner. They don't quite have the long legs of the white rump sandpiper, so they don't teeter up quite as much. And they tend to be a little browner around the back and shoulders. They also have what look like black dots or black diamonds on the back of the adults, and a really scaly look on uh, the young ones. Trust me, they're not easy and there aren't many of them, but they are here. Okay, two last tips. You often fly in flocks, right? Look for the size difference in the birds and pick out the ones that don't look like all the others and follow that to the ground. And maybe that's one of your unusual birds. And one last tip. Know before you go. Every shore in Maine is different as to when the tide starts to open up the shorebird mudflats. 
Here in Lubeck, about two hours after high tide, it starts to get good. In fact, I know from years of experience that if I'm down in this spot and watch this first mud open up, this is where the shorebirds are going to come. I just wait there and let them come to me.